Two Hands and a Hammer, Luke Wyatt, Preston Geist, Jordan Luthi, Alex Borbo. I hope I pronounced that right. B Turn Plays, Caden Smith, Alec Bowler, Speck Brook Trout Fisher, Mark McKee. Those are some of the brand new subscribers just from this week. I think each and every one of you guys that I shouted out for doing that and everybody else that I didn't wasn't able to shout out. If you guys want to be shouted out, you know what to do. Hit that button. Now let's get into this. Welcome back to another Foul Friday. Today we're going to talk about sky busting and pass shooting. And we're going to discuss the reasons why those two things are frowned upon by the waterfowl community. But before we get into that, why don't you guys drop a comment below of a specific time uh, someone pass shooting uh, or sky busting affected your hunts, whether it's public land, private land, duck or geese, it doesn't matter. And also, if you have f some advice that you see that I don't hit on during this, why don't you drop it below and let me know. So right out of the gate, I have to admit that I am guilty of both of these waterfowl sins. Now, sky busting is one thing to me, but pass shooting is a whole different animal. And here's why. So what I'm referring to as far as pass shooting is, let's say uh, you get up early in the a.m., you go to a pond or lake where a big group of geese in particular, but ducks also, are roosting, and you sit behind some evergreens, like an evergreen row that butts up against that body of water, and you wait till they fly right over treetop height, and you bust them. You might kill some, you might not, but you still bust a lot of birds coming off of that roost. Here is why I particularly do not like that and a lot of other hunters hate that. I don't really care about the infamous, oh, you're teaching the birds, oh, you're learning them up term, or whatever term as far as your the geese are learning the shot or whatever. Here's what I really am concerned about. More importantly is, is you're scaring the geese a big group of geese, I'm talking about one, two, plus thousand geese off a roost that it only, it, it only takes one time to do this and you might scare them off of that roost for the rest of the season. And by doing that, this in, is who and what it affects. The main problem is, is that there are probably hunters a mile up to maybe even five miles away that are set up and hunting, maybe they're not hunting, maybe they have permission to hunt the coming weekend or something, that the birds that you just booted off a roost are probably not going to go to that feed now. So as an added side note to that statement, you got to remember we're all waterfowl hunters here and each and every one of us dedicate a lot of time and a lot of money to these hunts. So that's why it really gets to me is because I might have 100, 200 plus miles in in a week of scouting, not 200 is a lot, but of scouting that I've spent the fuel, I've, I've spent all the money and time to get that field and when you kick them birds off like that, you just ruined it for me and probably a lot of other people. So as waterfowlers, we all have to be respectful to each other. If, you're, if we're not respectful to each other, this sport is just going to go downhill and this is not a competition. This is hunting. Remember, the outdoors is how most of us were raised, and that's why we're still doing this thing. So when birds change their roost, they usually kind of switch up on their, uh, their feeding fields. So when you do this, I don't, really, I, I don't really care about the reasons as like, well, it's unethical, or well, well it's cheating. My main reason is you affect other hunters. But moving on, now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to sky busting. So my term to sky busting is really, you know, birds that are not decoying properly all the way, all the way down, getting on the ground, or getting in range. Those birds that are staying high enough, they're not necessarily flaring, they're fluttering above you, or they're just passing by that you know are out of range, and when you are repetitively taking those sky bus shots and missing. And what's worse is when you're taking those repetitive shots at bigger groups of birds. 
But back to the teaching term, this is the only time when I would agree by saying you might be teaching the birds something. You know, if they're, if they're coming over some decoys and obviously they don't like them all that much to, to uh, commit all the way, and then you shoot and you flare them off, I would assume that, yes, we taught them a little bit of something. And if it happens quite a bit, well, then we might be teaching them a lot of something, you know. So the late season might end up being harder, and that's, that's an added uh, factor why late season might be a little harder, guys. But now, before you get mad and go drop a hate comment on me, I know that a lot of you out there, and me and myself, I love doing it too, is throwing, a, throwing in a three and a half inch shell with a full choke and then nailing them long range shots. Now when it's two and three birds per group and you got that long choke tube in and you're doing that, even on bigger groups, if, if you know you got four or five guys with long range choke tubes and three and a half inch shells, it's not sky busting in me. It's fair game because I'll tell you what, that's badass when you hit that bird that's cloud height for God's sakes. But if the birds are doing this to you, they're staying high, they're out of range, First off, make sure you're hidden good. Make sure you're blinded up well so they can't see you. And if you do that, and you know, hell, they can't see us, start changing up your decoy spread. It's never a bad thing to start changing up your decoy spread. Always pay attention to the wind. The wind switches a lot, so if it's switched, change that sucker up. Wind is one of the biggest things that you guys are gonna hear me stress about. If it's low wind conditions and you don't have movement in your spread, and I'm and I'm talking about duck also on water, but on, on field, if your decoys are not moving on them stakes or your silhouettes are laying flat and just hanging like a dead sock, it's one of the primary reasons why them birds probably aren't coming down. They're not flaring, but they're not committing because they're like, okay, something does not look right here. Hello. I think we tackled those two subjects pretty clearly and we covered them well. Um, I do these Foul Fridays every single Friday. So uh, if you guys want more tips and how to's, come on back on Friday. I'm putting out a lot of how to's over the summer. I think I'm putting out an average of like three videos a week. So come on back. We'll be here doing it. I thank each and every one of you for four. Bleh. There, I can't talk again like usual. But I thank every one of you for watching. Come on back. We'll see you again. Peace.